Today we're going to look at the parties of a crime, or really who is involved in a particular crime. And just about any crime, there's going to be at least one person, but there may be more than one. Um, so what we have is uh, an accessory before the fact. An accessory before the fact is someone who helps plan out a crime, but they're not actually present during the commission of a crime. And I'll use an example of that here in a minute. So let's say these two individuals are planning out uh, this crime. The plan is that they're going to go into the store, they're going to shoot the clerk, and they're going to rob the actual store. Um, so that's the plan. They're, they're drawing it out together. But one of these is not going to be around when the crime is committed. They're going to be out of town somewhere else. It doesn't matter. But they won't actually be participating in the crime. The person who's not participating in the crime, who's not actually there, is referred to as the accessory before the fact. Um, so they plan out this crime, and they're going to get a getaway card. Now, the principal is the person who actually carries out the crime. The person right here in the store robbing the clerk, that's the principal of the crime. The person who's actually carrying that out. An accomplice is someone who is present during the crime, but not participating in the same level as the principal. Okay, so a getaway driver would be an example of an accomplice. Getaway driver in this case is waiting outside the store while the principal goes in and robs the store. When the principal is done, they jump in the car, the getaway driver drives them away. The getaway driver is an accomplice. They help and aided in some way. They're present in the crime and they help and aided in some way. Uh, let's say they go to another individual's place, someone who knew nothing about the crime beforehand. Okay, that's referred to as an accessory after the fact. Okay, so somebody who helps after the crime has been committed, but has no prior knowledge of the crime. So in this scenario, they drove to a friend's house. The friend didn't know anything about this robbery. But when they got there, they said, hey, we need you to do some stuff for us. We need you to wash up the clothes. We need you to bury uh, the gun. Um, and some other evidence. And the person says, all right, I'll do that for you. They didn't know about the crime before, but now they know, and now they're actively participating in at least covering it up. That's known as an accessory after the fact. Now, <clears throat> those are just vocab terms, but it's important that we realize that. So the parties of the crime, we have these, these four here. An accessory before the fact, a principal, an accomplice, and an accessory after the fact. Not every crime has all of these parties. Um, a crime may just have a principal. But they may have multiple accessories before the fact. They may have multiple accomplices. They may have multiple accessories after the fact. What's important to realize is that in this particular case, let's say we have a robbery, an armed robbery. That's our crime. That's what the principal can be charged with. But so can the accessory before the fact, and so can the accomplice. The accessory before the fact and the accomplice can be charged with the exact same crime as a principal. If the principal would have shot and killed the clerk, it would have been a murder. The accessory before the fact could be charged with that if that was the plan. If they knew the principal was going to go in there and shoot and kill the clerk, then the accessory before the fact could be charged with murder also. The accomplice, since they're helping, can be charged with murder. The accessory after the fact cannot. Now they can be charged with other crimes. Like obstruction of justice, or maybe uh, hiding evidence, or, or you know whatever that state law will call it. But... They can't be charged with the same crime as a principal. Sometimes we have crimes that aren't an action that we do. It's something that we don't do. Most of the time when we think of crimes, we think of an action. You rob the store. Well, the robbing the store is an action. You, know? you stole a car, those kind of things. A good Samaritan law, or a crime of omission, is when it's a crime not to do something. It's a crime to fail to act. Now, there's not a ton of these out there, but they are not completely uncommon. If I'm a medical professional, let's say that I'm a doctor, and somebody's having a heart attack, uh, you know, just out on the street or something, and I refuse to help them, that's a crime of omission. I'm a medically trained professional that failed to aid somebody in need. So we do see some of those crimes. We also see a crime of attempt. 
a crime of attempt is when you try to do something, you attempt to do it, but you were unsuccessful. Well, you can't be charged with murder if you didn't actually kill somebody, right? So if I shoot at somebody, meaning to kill them, but miss, I can't be charged with murder. They're not dead. I, but I could be charged with attempted murder. The same thing with robbery. That last scenario I went with the principals uh, in, in the parties of the crime. Let's say someone goes into the store attempting to rob the place, but the clerk overtakes that person and holds them down and they're arrested. Well, they weren't successful in robbing the place, so they can't be charged with robbery. They didn't actually get any money, but they could be charged with attempted robbery. So when a person tries to commit a crime but fails to actually achieve it, they can be charged with attempt. Solicitation. Asking, urging, commanding, advising someone to commit a crime. Now, we see this sometimes. It's a little bit different than attempt. Let's say that uh, I convince you, either through bribery or through force or threats, let's say I have some secret information against you, and I say, you know what, um, you go burglarize cars for me. Go do this. Okay? Um, I didn't go burglarize a car. You did. But because I told you to, or commanded you to, or urged you to, I could be charged with solicitation for these, these crimes. And sometimes you'll see this like maybe a solicitation for murder. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's say someone goes to a, uh, an individual and says, hey, I'll give you $10,000 if you go kill my boss. And uh, that person goes to the police and says, hey, this guy just asked me to kill his boss. Well, it wasn't an attempt. No one actually tried to kill the boss, but, but the first individual was asking or urging or commanding someone to commit a crime. And that is a crime of solicitation. Homicide is really just the taking of one life by another person. Sometimes it's criminal, sometimes it's not. So just the word homicide really just means that the killing of one human being by another human being. And then homicide really is can be relatively complicated because it's divided into truthfully a lot of factors. Um, so let's let's just start with murder. We hear the term murder a lot, and, and oftentimes kids may use it incorrectly. Murder is a criminal homicide committed with malice. And what we mean by malice is the intent to kill. If you intend to kill somebody and you do kill somebody, that is murder. But not all homicides are murder, and not all homicides are first-degree murder because murder is divided into both first-degree and second-degree murder. So murder, killing somebody, excuse me, homicide with intent to kill is what we call murder. Okay? And there's first-degree murder and second-degree murder. Okay? And the difference between those two is premeditation. Okay, so let's say that I plan on going into a store, killing the clerk. And taking the money. Okay, I have this plan written out, drawn out. I take steps towards uh, carrying it out. I go in there, I kill the clerk, I take the money, and I leave. Okay, that's first degree murder. There is premeditation. I pre planned out that murder. Um, that's the most serious type of homicide that we have. Now, second degree murder is very, very similar, and it is also very serious, but it is not. Meditate. Okay, so let's say that I go into a store. I don't think that there's going to be anybody there. Uh, I, I break in the back door. I'm going to burglarize the store. I think it's empty. And there happens to be somebody in there cleaning the front or something. Um, and they challenge me. And then at that moment, I decide I'm going to kill them. Okay, so I intended to kill them. You know, but I didn't have any premeditation. That may be second degree murder. It's a serious crime. You know, you sit in prison for the rest of your life for that, but it's not quite as serious. It's first degree murder. So the big difference between murder and other types of homicides is that it's criminal and it was intended. You meant to do it. Now, what if you didn't mean to kill somebody, but you still killed them? Well, it's not murder, but it would fall under what we call manslaughter. Manslaughter is unintentional killing. Didn't mean to kill anybody. However, your actions were wrong, and it led to somebody's death. 
<clears throat> and there's two types of manslaughter. Um, the typical definition of a voluntary manslaughter is if you meant to harm somebody, but you didn't mean to kill them. Okay, so let's say that, that I get into a fight, I punch somebody. I have no intention of killing it, but this person falls down, he hits his head on a brick or something, and he ends up dying from that. So me hitting him killed him. It's a homicide. One person's action led to the death of another. But it wasn't an intended homicide. There was no malice. There was no intent to kill. But there was intent to harm. So that makes it what we call a voluntary manslaughter. Now what if there's no intent to harm? What if I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing? Let's say that I'm drinking and driving. And I'm uh, uh, over the limit. And I crash my car into somebody else. And I kill that individual. I didn't mean to harm them. Wasn't it my intent to harm anybody at all? But I was still doing something that was wrong. That's called involuntary manslaughter. Killer did not intend to harm anybody, but their actions resulted in the death. So it could even be I'm driving a car and I'm intoxicated and I crash the car and the passenger in the car, well, my best friend, dies here. Well, it's certainly not murder. There was no intent to kill. It's not voluntary manslaughter because there was no intent to harm even, but it is involuntary manslaughter because I was doing something I should not be doing. DUI death or driving through a stop sign or, or any way in which someone is acting in a negligent manner, but they're not intending to kill somebody. Okay, those are involuntary manslaughter examples. So if there's a homicide and it's a criminal homicide, it may be a first degree murder or a second degree murder. It might be a voluntary manslaughter, or it might be an involuntary manslaughter. Now, what's the difference? Well, if we go to the South Dakota law, the difference is this. First-degree murder is punishable by death or life in prison in the state penitentiary. A lesser sentence than those who can't be given out. So if somebody is convicted of first-degree murder in South Dakota, they will either be sentenced to die for that crime, or they will be given life in prison. So what's the difference between that and second-degree murder? Well, second-degree murder is life in prison in the state penitentiary. A lesser sentence can't be given out. Really, the only difference is if it's second-degree murder, you can't be sentenced. Next, please have a custodian unlocked 201. Next, please have a custodian unlocked 201. Thank you. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, second-degree murder, you can spend the rest of your life in prison, but you won't be executed for it. Both are very, very serious crimes. It's a slight difference between them. Voluntary manslaughter is life in prison in state penitentiary or, you know, less. So a judge can say, all right, this is a voluntary manslaughter. I'm going to give you life in prison. But very often, that's not the case. It might be 10 years, it might be 20 years, it might be 30 years. But if it's a voluntary manslaughter, it's going to be a much less sentence than a second degree murder. I've never seen or rarely seen a life in prison for a voluntary manslaughter. And then the involuntary manslaughter, the maximum a person can give is 10 years in prison. A lesser sentence may be given out. So you could be an involuntary manslaughter and get three months, six months, two years. I've seen all of those things. Uh, or you could get the max of 10 years. There is a big di difference. The big difference and um, all of them are homicide. All of them, it's one action took the life, or uh, one person's action took the life of another person. But the circumstances around them are what's different. And then the punishment are what's different. You know, so I can't just use the term homicide. And actually, not all homicides are even criminal homicides, because we have some non-criminal homicides. Excusable homicide is non-criminal that's not a, uh, approved by the state, meaning that it's it's not okayed by the state in advance. However, it's also not a crime. So let's say I'm driving my car, I'm following the speed limit, I'm not, been, I'm not intoxicated, I'm not really doing anything wrong, but I hit an icy patch in the road. I hit that icy patch and my car rolls over and my passenger dies. I wasn't doing anything wrong. So it's not a criminal, it's not a crime. But it's still a homicide. My action led to the death of another. So that one would be a an excusable homicide, basically an unfortunate accident. Uh, so it's not a criminal offense. Uh, justifiable homicide is one that's ordered by the state, meaning that let's say it's an executioner carrying out 
uh, capital punishment, or it could be uh, a police officer who shoots somebody in line of duty. Anytime there's a homicide, there's going to be an investigation. And if that investigation turns out that the person was doing something wrong, okay, so let's say I, I'm driving a car, uh, I hit an icy patch, I roll over, uh, and, and they investigate it, and they investigate that, you know, I hadn't been drinking, I hadn't been speeding, none of those things, then they'll most likely be ruled an excusable homicide. If that investigation turns out that I had been drinking or speeding or whatever, then I may be charged in voluntary manslaughter. So the investigation will kind of determine how these crimes are classified, the actions around them. Yes. A few others that we're going to just quickly cover. We know that if we steal something, you know, if you rob a store, you, you take somebody's bike off their front lawn, or whatever you do, that's a crime. But it's also a crime to receive stolen property. If a person knew or had reason to believe that something was stolen, and they accepted that, or bought that, then that's receiving stolen property. Let's say that uh, there's been a, a rash of burglaries in garages where tools have been stolen. And it's been in the paper. I knew that. And let's say an individual comes up to me and says, hey, I got some tools. Uh, I'll sell them to you cheaply. Uh, and he's selling them to me in the, out of the back of his car. He says, all right, here's a saw, a table saw, or a, a, a skill saw. I'll sell it to you for $10. Okay, well, I know that there's been a rash of burglary. This seems like a little bit of a shady deal, but I say, yeah, I'll take it in. I could be charged with the crime of receiving stolen property. This prison of a felony is, it's a felony if you know somebody commits a felony and, and you don't turn them in, you don't report them. So if I know my neighbor is doing those burglaries, he's going around burglarizing those garages, he comes up to me and says, yeah, here's what I'm doing, I'm burglarizing houses. Well, I know he's committing these crimes, it's a felony. His crime is a felony. If I don't turn him in, I have committed a felony felony of, of misprison of a felon. You see it occasionally. You don't see it that much. There's no misprison of a misdemeanor, meaning that if I know you're speeding, but I don't turn you in, I can't get in trouble for that. Now, the rest of these, I'm not going to go over right now. Some of these we've kind of covered, but in your note guide, you have all of these. So I want you to review them. Read burglary and robbery. What is the difference between the two? What's the difference between an assault and a batter? We've already covered the murders and manslaughters and so on. Rape and a statutory rape, or rape and a sexual contact. Now, you ought to realize, too, that every state has different names for these things. And even though there's a lot of similarity, they're not all the same. Like, South Dakota doesn't have, remember we talked about voluntary manslaughter and involuntary manslaughter? We don't have them. We have them, but we don't call them that. We call them first-degree manslaughter and second-degree manslaughter. First-degree manslaughter is the same thing as voluntary. Second-degree manslaughter is the same thing as involuntary. So these are the general definitions. These are the general terms that we use. But you've got to realize that because of the whole federalism thing, because every state gets to write their own laws, they can also come up with the name for those laws and the sentence for those laws. So this is a general definition of, of what these would be. Thank you.